Hey, this is Ciderhelm, and this is an informal guide to the expert Abyssal Precipice bosses. Abyssal Precipice is an introductory Tier 2 dungeon, and has only one moderate DPS check. A party entering Abyssal Precipice should have at least two dispels available. Abyssal Precipice is a short instance and is recommended for groups running their first Tier 2 expert dungeons. As with all of these guides, I will inform you of which encounters have DPS timers. If they do not have DPS timers, you can stack additional healers or readjust your party as necessary. While we do kill these bosses quickly, these strategies worked well when we are first progressing through these instances and were heavily undergeared. Finally, if you enjoy this guide, please subscribe to the channel. Kaler Andronos is the first boss in Abyssal Precipice. Andronos has three primary abilities to watch out for. The first ability is marked by white circles summoned on the ground beneath a player. Players need to move out of this immediately. After several seconds, a large pillar comes up from this location. The second ability is Icy Explosion, an AoE that will kill anyone in line of sight. This is a very long cast. During this time, players need to immediately run behind the summoned pillar and stay there until the cast is finished. At the end of the Icy Explosion cast, Andronos will launch snowballs at players still in line of sight. These have a travel time, and a player who didn't run behind the pillar fast enough can look like they died behind the pillar because they had another second to run before they were hit. The best way to handle pillars in Icy Explosion is to have the party move somewhat close to the pillar once it's summoned, especially if they're on the opposite side of Andronos. The third ability to watch out for is an AoE he places on a random party member. This ability will rapidly pull nearby players on top of the affected player and deal damage. For this reason, the party should stay spread apart. This ability always fades before Icy Explosion has been cast, so it should not affect players who are running to the pillar. This encounter does not have a DPS timer. Ice Talon is a second encounter in Abyssal Precipice. This is a two-phase encounter with significant party and tank damage. Two healers, ideally each with dispels, is strongly recommended for this encounter. During Phase 1, you will be fighting Falcon or Landrak. Landrak has two things to watch out for. First, he will occasionally lift a party member in the air and knock them backwards away from him. For this reason, players should always make sure their back is to the mountainside. Second, he will summon three adds to his side. These are trivial adds, though they should be killed with cleaves and AoEs. At 20% health, Landrek will begin summoning Ice Talon from the nearby cliffs. He will become slightly transparent at this point, but DPS should make sure they continue to DPS him and any remaining adds down as fast as possible to ensure a smooth transition into Phase 2. Phase 2 begins when Ice Talon flies onto the platform. Ice Talon needs to be picked up immediately by the tank. Ice Talon has several abilities to watch out for. First, Ice Talon will occasionally charge players, stunning them and leaving a very damaging dot on them that needs to be dispelled immediately. Second, Ice Talon will still lift players into the air and knock them backwards, just as Falcon or Landrak did. Finally, Ice Talon will frequently put a very powerful dot on the tank that will only be dispelled if the tank is healed to full health. For this reason, it is best to keep the tank topped off throughout the encounter. This encounter has no DPS timer.
The third boss in Abyssal Precipice is Majolik the Bloodwalker. Once Majolik's human form is at 50%, he will deal massive AoE and reappear as the Bloodwalker. At this point, the encounter begins. Majolik the Bloodwalker has significant tank damage. Additionally, two dispels are strongly recommended. The first thing to watch out for in this encounter is Blood Contagion. This is a dot that deals massive damage to the targeted player and everyone around them. This also spreads from player to player. However, if this is dispelled the moment it goes up, it deals no damage and has no impact on the party. The second thing to watch out for are Blood Crystals. He will trap random players inside these. These Blood Crystals must be broken as quickly as possible. I recommend two Dispellers in the party specifically because Blood Crystals prevent casting and Blood Contagion quickly becomes a problem if your Dispeller is trapped. Renthar is the fourth boss in Abyssal Precipice. If you have a player with a tank off spec or a cleric or warrior with a shield, you will want them to stand on the opposite side of the room from the tank. Renthar's core ability is Frozen Yell, after which he will charge the farthest person in the room. This is not threat dependent, though the player at the far end needs to be in combat with Renthar to be targeted. After Renthar charges, he will run back to the tank, then charge again and run back again. As Renthar is running and nears the tank, he can do a powerful cleave that will kill people nearby. Ranged DPS and healers should be careful not to stand too close. The other ability to watch out for in the Renthar encounter is the ground AoE that will deal massive damage to players if they don't move out of it. This encounter does not have a DPS timer.
Calyx the Ancient is the final encounter in Abyssal Precipice. This encounter benefits from two healers and at least one dispeller. The main thing to watch out for in this encounter are three lines of electricity that circle him throughout the fight. These lines form a few seconds into the encounter and the party should be spread out between the thirds as best as possible. If players cross these lines, they will be slowed and take significant damage, so it's best to avoid them at all times. Calyx will periodically cast Frozen Wrath, an AoE that will bring everyone's health down to a set percentage. This will not kill players, and the party should not take damage immediately afterwards, so make sure the tank's health is handled before focusing on party healing. Calyx will occasionally summon an icy whirlpool beneath players. If players do not move out of this, they will take damage and be put into an ice tomb. As a general rule, I rarely move out of this as a tank because it doesn't deal much damage to me, and I do not want to disrupt the pie segments of the room too much. This whirlpool can exist immediately before a Frozen Wrath, but it will always complete immediately before Frozen Wrath, preventing its damage from killing people who are brought to low health. Calyx will occasionally summon Jagged Ice Shield, a damage shield that can quickly kill DPS who aren't paying attention. Players should avoid attacking Calyx while the Jagged Ice Shield is active. This can be purged. Calyx does not have a DPS timer. It is recommended that parties struggling with this encounter use additional healers. Also, due to the Whirlpool locations, melee are slightly worse than ranged DPS for this encounter. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it, and feel free to visit us on www.eventideguild.com if you have any questions.